Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the Refuse to Lose podcast. My guests today are Seagull superstars Jake and Tom Trebojevic. Now, the brothers are a little different to my previous guests. They haven't had to endure uh, any kind of tough upbringing or uh, being subject to heavy trauma on their road to being professional athletes, but that doesn't stop them from having a great message to share. Despite all their success playing for New South Wales and Australia, they're two of the most giving people with their time you could ever meet. They do plenty of work in their home community on the northern beaches of Sydney, from coaching young kids to working with mental health charities. And in this episode today, we cover off all of that, plus plenty of other fun footy chat, and of course, a good Des Hasler story as well. So please enjoy my chat with Jake and Tom Trebojevic. Tommy and Jake Trebojevic, welcome to the Refuse to Lose podcast, boys. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> the famous Trebojevic house, fair few uh, games of footy played in this backyard, I'd imagine. Who's the... Uh, Who's the backyard king? Oh, depends. Um, we didn't really do much in the backyard. Normally out the front. Got a nice park out the front. So um, that was always good fun. Anything with a bit, big of, bit of a bigger field, um, I'd normally get Jake. But once we you know, got in tight, um, yeah, he'd get over the top of me. There were some good games, but growing up, you know, obviously we've got the four of us and then um, sort of a big uh, community around here, obviously good park out the front, it was um, some re- really good games and had uh, had some really good uh, really good times out there, so it was some really good you know, practice, that sort of thing, yeah. There was some cracking c- c- cricket games. Yeah, it was, it was, cracking. It was quality, good, yeah. good place to grow up, mate. Mate, I saw, um, I don't know if you guys saw the NRL ad, did you see that, but it's had you, it had you 1996 playing yeah. backyard footy and you, you were pretty good for someone who was probably just born. I, was, I think I was two <laughs> months old, so... I just show. I've always had it, you know. You know me. Um, yeah, but I think, oh, you know, no, they've done all this, like all the talks about Latrell Mitchell, and they thought about this, and no one sought to check how old Tom Trebojevic was in 1996. Oh well, I think they were trying to put two things in one, and um, yeah, oh, look, everyone makes mistakes. I think they've they've corrected it now, but um, it'd be nice to be that big at two, at, what, two months old. Yeah. <laughs> you shot up after that. Yeah, um, we're we're stuck in the middle of this COVID nineteen thing right at the moment. So you guys are spending even more time together than you probably normally do. And I reckon for a pair of brothers, you probably spend more time than anyone on the face of the earth together. Like you go to rep camps together, you live together, you're in all these teams together. Like do you you ever get sick of each other? Oh, oh, sometimes. It's all right. I guess we we obviously uh, enjoy spending time with each other, but going to training, that sort of thing, we enjoy enjoy doing that. So I guess that's just part of life for us, obviously, that we're lucky we get to do things together and, I guess this time can be testing with families and that sort of thing, but I, I guess in a way it's helped that we can train together because you're not allowed to train with anyone. So we, we can, I guess, motivate each other to go and do something because, you know, me, I'd rather not do it. But if we've got someone who wants, you know, to go do something, I'll get into it. So I guess that's been a blessing in disguise. Surely someone gets on each other's nerves here, like, you know. Well, um, I think everyone gets on Jake's nerves. He's, he's the angry one of the household, so... Um, <laughs> He's the one ben, that... He, my youngest brother, Ben. No, Jake's the one that um, everyone wants to buy into something. Everyone's ready to do something. Jake just won't do it. Just flat out won't do it. So, um, oh, it's good fun. I, like, like Jake said, um, the fact that we do have... We've got each other and um, Ben, the youngest one, who's trained with us in the squad, um, we're able to train together. It makes it a lot easier to get out there and to do stuff. And, um, you know, I guess we all get each other through it. But you, you get rolled up a bit, eh? You're the one who gets... Yeah, they find me up. They, they <laughs> very easily, easily annoyed. <laughs> yeah, easily annoyed. The oh, look, we a lot of reasons why we're doing this podcast, but the main one I wanted to get you two on for is because I just want to talk about the greatest rugby league team of all. Sorry, the greatest team of all time, which was the Wolfpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a team! The Northern <laughs> Beaches Oz Tag. Super team. We were the original back to back. Forget the Roosters. We went back to back. <laughs> what a team it was! Eh? Like we, we, play, we all played in a team together, but there was some there was some star power. Like we were over the over the salary cap. Dude, we had we had who else we had? We had Liam Knight, was led yep. by yeah, inspirational skipper Liam Knight. <laughs> yeah, Sam Short, Sam Short. Matty Cavallo. Yeah, Matty Cavallo. So James Roberts made James, a guest James Roberts guest appearance. Jeez, we were over Guth, the cap. Gutho made Gutho a guest Gutho made an appearance. Yeah, yeah Gutho. <laughs> there was some like real superstar talent in that. And then you got me. <laughs> Obviously. Remember the day where we called Gotham in for the semi and the other team really complained? Yeah. Oh. So that was a full that was a full salary cap drama. That was they the lady came up, she said, You guys have brought in extra players. You can't do this. 
And I've just gone full Nick Politis, <laughs> and I've been like, no, it's all right. They were coming, they were always coming, and it worked out. And I think, yeah, you're right, we went back to back, didn't we? Yep, we did. And then, and then you guys got too good for it. And you thought, oh, it's more important to play for Manly or something. Is it? Is it, is it was, they were good days back in the Wolf Pack days. It was Wednesday. Um, we used to finish 20s training and come straight down to Rat Park there. Oz Tag, it was yeah. good. And, it was good, good fun. And now, yeah, now you're just playing first grade. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what's more important. There. <laughs> Look, uh, uh, we mentioned Manly, you know, you guys have obviously been playing what I think I saw the other day, Tom, it's like five years since your debut and it's probably even longer, Jackie, obviously since you debuted, you know, you probably came in with Manly at a time after a really long period of success for Manly and it feels like now you guys are really starting to turn the corner and get back to that level, you know, what's it, the feeling like with, with them in the Manly Seagulls right now? Oh, I obviously hope so. Hopefully we can get back to that success that they had during that, you know, 10 years where they made the finals, you know, every single year, won two premierships, you know, um, and lost a couple of grand finals, you know, such a such a good team and it's it's been great having um, Desi back. But, you know, when it, we know we're a long way off. I guess the sort of top four sides are up there. We've got to find a way to compete with them because, you know, they're the, they're the ones who are doing it week in, week out and um, that's sort of what we're striving striving to get to, yeah. You guys were there. You were like, you were, but like last year you were... In the finals, you know, one little moment probably, uh, but you, you know, right you up there. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, but mate, that's I, a touchy subject, Jake. Mate. I think on the back of what Jake said, like um, that side that um, you know Manly had going in early, early last decade and late the the one before was was something special. You know, you don't see too many sides going around like that. Um, you know, made four or so grand finals, two premierships. So were you know that was something, you know. I grew up watching and love watching them play. So, um, yeah, we're, we're very far off that. But, um, you know, it was awesome to, you know, win more games than we did than we lost last year and get back in the finals, but still a lot to work on. You said, you know, I don't, look, I don't want to bring the moment up. I don't want to because it's, it's a touchy subject. And I know you hate losing at the best of times. Like, you're probably the, are you, do you reckon, they're the sorest loser in, in the NRL? Uh, not far off, yeah. <laughs> a few drop lips getting around. <laughs> no, you held yourself sweet after it. <laughs> what was he like after it, Tom, for like, like a couple of days after? Like for people that don't know, Sin Bind in the, what, prelim final. Yeah. Oh, but well, the week well, before. The week we before, out, yeah. you know, two weeks yeah. out from the grand final and, you know, you guys were probably in the box seat to, to beat South then and move into the week before well, the grand look, final. He, I think after the game, he wasn't too bad. He wasn't too wasn't great to that 10 minutes off the field, but... Um, <laughs> We won't go into that after the, after the game. You know, look, um, you know, I guess we spent everyone spent a bit of time together. You you know, you kind of forget about it. But um, yeah, look, it's, I guess you know that happens in rugby league, and you just got to cop it on the chin sometimes. It's a frustrating time, mate. Frustrating yeah. time. But I guess it was great to be back playing finals footy. I guess you, t- you take the positives from the year. You know, the year before we sort of ran second last year. Um, it was it was just really really good to be back competing with the quality quality sides, and hopefully we can just keep improving. You know, as a team and as a club, and you know, Desi's been really, really good for us. You know, he's a great, great leader, great coach, and I think everyone's um really learned a lot from him. And he's he's brought brought the best out in a lot of people, which is um it's exciting. But you know, we know we're a long way off. Desi, he's the best, isn't he? Like uh, I, on the last podcast, I spoke to Joel Thompson uh, um, just about Des, and you know, I told him the story about the the chewing gum and the <laughs> <laughs> call me party boy. Like he is one of the most unique. Yeah, I'm fascinated by him. Like, he's, he's so good. I like when I remember when he first came in. Everyone was um, well, sorry for the second time. This is the start of last year. Everyone was a bit scared of him. We didn't know what to expect. Real aura about him, you know, his, um, big presence, and it was just it's been great. Been been great to really get to know him, really learn under him, play under him. He's he's I know he's so smart. He he thinks about everything so much. I think he thinks about footy his whole life. You know, like anything he tells you, you know, he's thought about it so much that it's only gonna it's only going to help you, you know. And he, he is a really funny guy. Like, got a great sense of humour, re- really good laugh. He's just he's a great leader. Have you got a funny Des moment off the top of your head that stands out? To uh, you? Funny. The, the best one was one day we um, Ches played a practical joke during the week, and he swapped he swapped a, a few um, GPSs around, and all during the session, all the um, people were in different spots, and the GPS stuff. But all running around trying to work out what what was going on. Like, like they're going, why is it going rehab what? running over here? Yeah, they're trying this? to they're trying to work it out. And um, anyway, so obviously they worked out. It was all switched over, and he's come in the next morning and absolutely sprayed sprayed everyone like 
how dare you do this, rah, 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 rah. This is when we're still getting to know him too. Yeah, so we're <laughs> like, this is very early on. Not, we're going... So he sprayed the players. Players, and, and yeah. Chez has put his hand up and go, look, sorry, mate, that was my, my... Like, did his laugh, didn't think, you know, whatever. And then we've walked into um, team meeting and, at, yeah, at this stage, we, we didn't really, like, no one really could work him out and everyone was still, you know, Des has a like, bit scared of him and he's... Um, Video sessions we used to be we used to be sitting there and just going, just don't choose me out, just because you, as soon as you picked you out, you know you were in trouble. So anyway, we walked in, everyone's on eggshells, and he's um he started talking about um the war and these Japanese kamikaze pilots. And we're going, where's this going? Like, where's this? Go-? He's going talking about how you know um these you know this Japanese leader was talking to these kamikaze pilots, saying you're our last hope of winning. Like, you, whatever you do, like. Like this is like you asked, like we we can't win this without you guys. We need you. Like and anyway, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna get in your plane, you're gonna fly into them and you're gonna fly straight into them and you're gonna you're gonna win us this war. And we're all going like what's We we like, all thought it was like an inspirational story. Yeah. That's what we thought. We're getting ready for this and then um he's up the front and so he's talking as as this guy going, You're gonna you're gonna win us the the war and he goes So are there any other questions? And um, and then he puts his hand up like someone else is asking a question. He goes, are there any other questions? And everyone just stopped there and he just started pissing himself laughing. And John Cartwright. Yeah. Him and John Cartwright started laughing. And it was a joke the whole time. We had No one had no idea. We didn't even get the joke. <laughs> like, we're all, oh, and, and there's no... there's No laughter at all. Just, no. <laughs> everyone's just sitting there like... What, offering yeah, up, like, what yeah. just happened? Like it was just like... And he Brody. thought it was the funniest. Thing. He was pissing he was himself. Ca- and Cardi. Yeah, and Cardi was so, Thank you, Cardi. No one else laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And just and everyone's like, all right, he's yeah. like, the weirdest like. Yeah, then yeah. we went out and trained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. I, he's just so unique. And I, we had to obviously wait for his permission to do this podcast because he controls absolutely everything around him. And it's quite amazing. But, oh, man, I, I love him. He's my yeah. favorite coach. He doesn't, he doesn't miss much, you know. He's... um. I oh, know he's, he's very he's very good, very 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 good to work under, as I said, and just a, he's a great leader. Yeah, I know we, we were just talking about before. I just made me think of your competitiveness, Jake. Um, when I remember it was Game Three, Origin twenty eighteen, and you guys had already won the series, and there was Game Three, and you guys lost obviously in a tight one. But I remember seeing the photo, and everyone's walking around with the shield, and everyone's all kind of happy, and then there's just you. Oh yeah, I remember that. I was <laughs> that and you're just filthy you're like you're supposed to be doing a lap of honor and you just can't get over the fact that you lost the game yeah that was that, that was a weird night yeah. looking back like obviously i was so pumped we got the shield like that was so good and it was a great series like like loved it any time you put on the blue jersey it's just so special you know and just just awesome to be in that team but just that that night i found i was hard because we were celebrating because we got the trophy but we'd lost it was just it's a tough one it didn't, yeah just i don't know i was hoping it would have been great getting i reckon the shield Game two there in Sydney when we when we wrapped it up that w- that would have been awesome but um it was it was a, it was a weird night but very happy that we got the shield you know that was um that was really cool that's always a debate isn't it you know whether you get the shield when you win it or not it, it, I feel like it like you know um it I guess it you know took away from it a little bit you know but it is what it is you know you're happy to win the series but. There's, there's yeah. definitely worse problems. We're yeah. definitely very happy with the series. And get you the, lo- get you've the, lost the, series before, haven't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. you? So yeah. so happy to win the series, you know. I just and so so happy to be in the blue jersey. It's just it's it's a, it's a great great feeling, you know. I guess child childhood dream growing up to play for the Blues and to get to do it and win a series and it was uh, very cool. So you now have won two straight, right? And there's this great kind of um, you know dynasty, I guess, building under Freddie. But all the talk at this year is, you know, if this COVID nineteen problem doesn't go away. Should they play Origin? Like, what? What's your guys' thoughts? Would you be happy to play in front of no definitely. crowds? Yeah, definitely. I just yeah, love playing footy. If we can we can get it on with no crowds, uh, that'd be fine. Obviously, crowds would be that adds to the experience. It's a great spectacle. You know, eighty thousand. It's it's special. But if we can't have crowds, definitely play with no crowds. Yeah, I think Origin's too big to not have. I think of all them nights growing up where you used to be on, we'd watch it on TV here at home. It was just. Um, so special, I think it adds to the rugby league calendar. It's a great event, you know. It's a it's in in terms of our, like inside Australia, I think it's one of the biggest sporting events, you know. So we've got we've got to got to keep it on. It's um excites so many people, and I guess it's just yeah, every, everyone watches it. You're the same, Tommy. Yeah, definitely the same. Look, you know, Jake said it. Um, it's a it's you know the biggest sporting event in the country, and um, you know, it brings 
everyone together or brings the states together and um yeah it, it needs to be on it, you know and in saying that um i think not only that everyone you know all the players would love to you know just get back playing footy and um you know it doesn't look too far away at the moment so um hopefully we can just you know do all the things right and um see what happens yeah i think it's it's a difficult one to kind of think about like whether you know origin's so great in that cauldron with the you know the crowd but you know you it has to kind of be played. It's 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 a strange one. It's a really strange time, and you know, hopefully it's over by then, and we can all get back to just playing well, they, at crowds. Well, and they, they were tossing up end of the year, eh? So they yeah, can hopefully that's what they're um, thinking. They're thinking end of the year, yeah. So they're hoping that makes sense. I guess, yeah. Yeah. It, look, who knows how long this thing's going to yeah. last? Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's all gone away, and we're back playing footy. Uh, as soon as possible, Mike. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get too bogged down in COVID nineteen because I think everyone's had enough of it. But yeah. I, I I do. I want to clear up a, a story, uh, Jakey, that's been going around about you for years, and it's and I don't know whether it's true, but it, people used to tell me that you, when you were younger, and you're known for your aggressive tackling style and kind of cutting blokes in half, but they, people used to tell me that when you were younger, you would apologise to kids after you tackled them. Is that nah, true? I think they, I think they, I think they've made that up. Hey, yeah, they, they always say <laughs> he's such a nice bloke that he used to. Cut kids in half and then apologise to them. Yeah, no, I think that I think that was made up. Eh? <laughs> really? Where do you reckon that came from? I don't know. Generally, don't know. Yeah, it's a, yeah, just sort of come out, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you sound like a really good bloke. Yeah. And in truth, you're a real asshole. <laughs> right? Full blind Derek. <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone knows that. Oh, whoever came up with it, thanks for that. <laughs> Help me, image. Yeah. So in. In all seriousness, but you guys too are known some of the the nicest guys in the NRL, and you you know you're really giving with your time and what you do. Look, you know, where does that sense come from? Because we see a lot of athletes, you know, and look, it's not always their fault. There's a lot of circumstances that create people to you know be bigger than life. You know, they've got a lot of people asking for their time, so they're not always you know the most forthcoming people. Or you know, they say don't meet your heroes, but in the case of you two, you really do give your time. Where, where does that? Oh, come I think from? just. Probably growing up, I guess our parents were really involved, like within our junior footy club. You know, they're both life members now. So I think growing up, that was a big part of our life. And I just, I guess, saying we did, yeah, and, and we enjoyed it. We met lots of great people down there at the Motorvale of our Raiders. And it's just yeah, a really enjoyable part of our upbringing, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think um, we're very lucky that we're both um, still play for our local club and um, we're still involved, I guess, in the community that we, we grew up in. And, um, you know, it makes it very easy. We still know a lot of people down. I guess at the footy club, and um, you know, it makes it a lot easier to get involved. So, what do you guys do? Yeah, I've seen like you down there in the yellow shirts. Like, a, yeah, who was coaching, water running? What were you doing? Jake did a bit more than me. He used to coach a bit, um, run water, do what you can, but not much you can I do. I was at a the moment. terrible coach, but I just went down there and did my best. Like, he used to call me six foot witch's hat, mate. Just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing? I don't even know what to say, eh? <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was good fun, you know. Go down and have a laugh with the kids and um, do your best. Have fun at training, you know. Sometimes enjoy training more than them, you know, having a kick and all that sort of thing. And um, a couple of goal-kicking comps, you know. It was, it, was, it was good fun. It's always good fun. Obviously, it's a shame for the kids this year. It's, with it all not being on, hopefully hopefully it can come back later in the year because obviously it's a big part of their lives and that sort of thing. So hopefully um, hopefully we can get it, get it back on for the back end. What do you what do you think it's like for these kids? Like I know you, do you if you, I don't know if you remember being that age, and I remember being that it'll be terri- age. It'll be ter- terrible. I couldn't think of anything worse. I used to remember like going to training was the best part of the week, and then the game on Saturday. Like you used to wake up and just hope it was sunny. Like just run out and hope it was sunny. Then we used to play and stay down there and watch um, all the other older teams play. You know, right right till the end at um, three o'clock was the last game. It was. It was it was awesome. Like we used to love it. We looked forward to it. Like yeah, even like when you finished school on a Friday, it was always the big training night. Was Friday night, and even if you weren't training, you were down there because everyone was down there. You'd be yeah, the whole board. I'd be down there. There'd be a barbecue. You would just practice, like, have a find a spot in the field. Footy, be doing everything. Footy was on, you know, just playing games with all your mates. It was just it was such a good time. Like looking back, it was. Bit, oh, I couldn't think. I couldn't imagine it for these poor kids. Obviously, be so tough. Yeah. Mm. But in in another sense as well, like obviously you guys can't get down there, and that's a loss for you as well. But like, what's it like for these kids to have you guys down there? Like, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you had one NRL player come to your your club, and it was the most exciting thing ever. Do you guys? Does it ever, do you ever think about that? How probably surreal it is for these kids? Oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't haven't really thought about that. I guess, but it's just I don't know. It's just enjoyable to go down there. If, 
I guess if if they get a kick out of it, that's pretty cool, definitely. But no, I haven't I haven't thought about that, but at all, yeah. Yeah, look, same with Jake. You you don't really think about it in that regard. Um, yeah, but like when you say it like that, I guess you know they would get a kick out of it, which is which is great. But you know we also enjoy it as well, so um, I guess it's a win win. When you were young, do you remember a player coming to meet or meeting a player that you that you were just so psyched about? Um, I was a, oh, we all loved um, Joey Johns, right? We grew up, we actually grew up sporting Newcastle. Everyone thought we were Manly fans, but we grew up sporting Newcastle. Me, Tom, and uh, Luke, um, the brother under Tom, and um, so Matty Johns' son was playing on the local comp, and Andrew came to watch him once. I think this is when they were still playing. I was that yeah. pumped. I remember I was that pumped, and then Joey's son actually ended up playing for the Motorvale Raiders like later on. So. We, like it was, yeah, it was cool. He was obviously a big hero of ours. We made us support Newcastle, and to see him down there once was uh, pretty cool. Yeah. How old were you then? Do you reckon? I was young, yeah, very, yeah, very young, very young, like eight or nine, yeah, something, yeah. And you, like, you know Joey now, and like, do you still kind of pinch yourself that like, you know get to yeah, know these Joey people. Johns? You know anything he says? <laughs> it's the eighth immortal. Yeah, <laughs> whatever he says is right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird, like, like that's that's what I mean. The kids would look at you guys that way, and like I don't, I, it's probably lost in you the the impact. It just you guys turning up and running the water is is quite amazing, like, and I, I think you probably don't think about that, but I think it really has an effect on these kids, yeah. you know. And, and it's a it's a really important thing to do. And and you said you mentioned before your parents, like your parents have kind of instilled this in you and you, you, your old man especially and your mum like well, your old man's kind of a, a bit of a local legend and that but can you tell us like the story like where does your kind of footballing pedigree come from like where, where does the passion come from that because your old man didn't play footy did he, uh, did he, he oh he played um local for he played for Narrabeen uh, the Narrabeen Sharks A grade yeah so that was back in the <laughs> in the 80s if you listen to him, you buddy, he should have played for Australia. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's that's all. That's all. I've been man. going around telling you that he's a local legend. I don't know if he's been getting in your ear, but um, he's something short of a local legend for sure. Nah, so he used to play um, Narrabeen for the Narrabeen Sharks A grade. So I think they were pretty good back in the eighties. Um, so he tells us and all his mates. But um, he used to, yeah, he told us like A grade was like back in the day was like big thing. They used to get like similar crowds to Manly games and stuff. So you said, but um, yeah. but was, you, was your old man? Was he born in Australia? Yeah, he was born in Australia, yeah, but, but his parents were born um in uh, Serbia and Croatia. He when he went to school, he couldn't speak English. That was um so your old man couldn't yeah, speak. English. So he learned English at school. So yeah. he's um he grew up in a farm in uh Warriwood, yeah. tomato picker. So so any time we're whinging, he bloody just gives it all us about how we don't know what hard work is and all this, and you wouldn't last a day on the tomato farm, and I've heard it a thousand times. He's probably right. He's probably right. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> no, so, but, so he, but he wouldn't have known rugby league then, like, growing up. In his, think, uh, he started very late. He yeah, started, started when he was, like, 20 or something, yeah, like, just right. playing, I don't know. Yeah. Played AFL as well in cricket, just, yeah. But so, where does the actual high level sporting talent come from then? Because if he's just playing local narrow. I don't know. I think. Must be mum. <laughs> Maybe the postman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there's no, definitely no doubting that you yeah. all belong to him. <laughs> you, all look, you all look exactly the same. But, uh, so, isn't there, isn't there talk? There's a Serbian rugby league team or something, isn't there? Like, I, I think there is a. Eh? The, what is it? The. Um there's something, yeah, I'm not too sure. But. I think they had a like a national team that were trying to qualify for the last World Cup. Yeah. So they definitely they definitely got comps in that over in Serbia. So definitely. that that could be a, a like a you know, and guys are like you know they can't get picked for Australia anymore. You guys could just be become Serbian rugby league superstar. Get, get, me, get me out of a preseason. <laughs> <I'll buy in. laughs> That's the backup plan. I'll be back in uh, January. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, Tommy, because obviously a lot of people talk about. You know, you, when you were younger, that the Swans wanted you and stuff, and obviously you guys are now signed long term at Manly. But you know, in this today's world, you know, with the athletic ability you have, a lot of people talk about swapping codes or playing AFL. Guys even think about NFL these days. Like, is it something you've ever thought about that down the track? Maybe oh, why not? If you achieve everything in rugby league, yeah. Look, um, I think it kind of summed it up there. Like for me now, like I, you know, definitely. Like it would, wouldn't it, you know? I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like you, I've still got a lot to do in this game, and I, I, I love this game. And um, you know, it's a the game I grew up with, and the game I 
enjoy playing, enjoy watching. So, um, yeah, look, it, it hasn't crossed my mind for sure. And, um, you know, I did play a bit of AFL as a kid, did enjoy it, but, um, you know, rugby league's where my passion is. And, um, yeah, look, hopefully um, get to achieve a lot more in it. What about you, <laughs> you got... Yeah, mate, I was if... thinking about going to... Um... <laughs> Sprinting. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, I, think, do do? I, think, uh, I don't think I've got any other games in me. I was thinking about that once. Uh, not that I would ever leave rugby league, but uh, I don't think I could play any other sport, eh? I'm not fast enough for AFL. You've got to run I, too I far. Don't even, I don't um, even think I could play AFL. Too hard. They run like 17 k's a game, like double. Can't even, I couldn't can't do even that. Uh, NFL, I'm too slow. Um, <laughs> Surely be one of those guys at the front. Just rugby union. Block and block. Got, rugby union, I've got no idea, so... <laughs> I think I'm just rugby league, hey. Maybe golf. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you rate yourself <laughs> oh. as golfers. If I got, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, i got a lot to work on in golf, hey. I've had, had a few uh, I don't. four days I'm lately. Four days, but it's good fun, good fun. How far do you reckon you, you cover in a game? Like, well, You probably know, but like... Oh, it's what? around about nine, nine Ks. Big game would be yeah. like close to ten, would yeah. it? Yeah. Average, I'd say around nine. Yeah, if I, if I, if I play like the full game, I'd, I'd get around eight. Yeah. So in the middle, yeah. What's the difference between centre and fullback for you? Like, if you're playing centre for New South Wales and then fullback, do you cover a lot more miles playing fullback? Yeah, you, you cover a bit, yeah. Fullback's the most on the yeah. field. Generally, the fullback, fullback and the halfback, fullback because the half. halfback does a lot of pushing, a lot of, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. But the fullback will generally get the most. I think you look at blokes like Tedesco and all that, they're just everywhere, you know. And they've got to be, I think, the fittest on the field and just got to be ready to go at the big moments. I guess they're, they're the ones who, like, have to produce in the big moments under fatigue. So they've got to, I guess, they train the hardest, that sort of thing. So, so seventeen k is, is a lot. More, you know, the AFL plays around seventeen k. Yeah, I can't a, buy into that. No. I'm full blown can't. Buy, I can't even kick. So, <laughs> of course, that hurdle first. Yeah, it might be a bit of a hurdle. Um, as we said before, like these kind of times, uh, you know, didn't want to hype on it too much. COVID nineteen, but in terms of you guys are at home a lot more, and I see Jackie that you know you've kind of got involved in looking after people's mental health in this time and how people you get involved with Gus Warland who's a kind of he does a lot of work in, in mental health but he's a you know a well known radio personality and stuff. Can you tell us a bit about yeah. the stuff you're doing? Oh no, I've just known known Gus for ages. He used to come down and watch us um play for the Motorvale Raiders, like when we we're growing up. So he was obviously loves his footy, he used to come down come down and watch then he used to coach uh, my brother Luke at cricket. So we, we knew him quite well and then he asked me to sort of come on board with his uh, gotcha for life. What he came up with and lately they've been doing a it's a really cool initiative it's called our co-live 19 where for the next 19 days because we're physically isolated but it's a good chance to connect with people every day like obviously we can't meet up with them but you know using we've got zoom and facetime and all that sort of stuff we'll give them a call or text or whatever just to make sure people know that you're thinking about them and that sort of thing so that people aren't on their own during this time during this physical isolation it's a great he says it's a great chance to turn it into like global connection and um, improve everyone's sort of mental mental fitness. And yeah, he's a great man. He's got some really good, really great guys on board. I think uh, obviously James Tedesco has come on board as well. He's got Steve Smith and you know Jude Bolton, many many other people. And he's just just a really really good guy doing great things for people. And that you know, anything he's involved with, I guess you want to be on board because it's um it's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's talking to Joel Thompson about it last time, and he was just saying how worried he was for. You know, people's mental health at this time. Like, it's obviously already. Like, it's a. It's Gus is obviously doing this all the time because it's a big issue in society. But yeah. then you accelerate it mm. tenfold when you're in times like this. So yeah, like it's just it could be yeah. worse. He's, he's right, Tom. Tom is a great man too. Eh? He's a re- really good guy in the community, and he he sort of spoke to all of us when it was happening. He says if anyone needs you know needs anything, give give him a call because obviously he's been been through a lot, and he sort of um got some great great experience, and he he'd definitely be able to help. Help people out, but he's a, he's a, he's a really good guy, Tomo. Yeah, he was telling me about how he's he's off drinking as well. Yeah, uh, how, how does he go? How do you reckon that goes? Like in a, he's saying it's hard in a footy in a footy sense. Yeah, like obviously you're isolated now, but you know when you, <laughs> it'd definitely be hard for him, especially when he's got uh blokes giving it to him the whole time. But uh, he, nah, yeah. no one, no one gives it to him, and everyone's sweet with him. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he's he, he handles it well. I think it, it's been really good for him. He's obviously um. Off it, off it for this year, and he's he's playing great footy. He's he's a really really good leader. He's just he's a great clubman. Really really good guy to have at your club. You know, just trains trains like really hard when he's out there. He gives everything on the field, and just he just wants um, not only himself but everyone and the team to be better and just keep improving and to be successful. So he, he's 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 been great. He's been great the last three years. Yeah. 
you did that for a while, didn't you? You you didn't drink like you coming up through the years. You... Oh, I just when I was yeah when I was young, yeah, just wasn't wasn't really into it too much, I guess. But footy, you know, uh, the footy culture got hold of me. <laughs> nah, 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 I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Nah, at you're all. not bad. No, but like I, I remember like in the early days and stuff. Uh, the, the, I think there was a, a manly Mad Monday at at my house one time. <laughs> under twenties, under twenties, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, under twenties. I was uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you and you were, you were like the only one who. <laughs> Uh, Looking after everyone, yeah, yeah, <laughs> babysitter, <laughs> yeah. That's that's that was you back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Growing up, that was. I don't know why. Hey, I don't know why I did that. I just seemed like the right thing to do, I guess. Yeah, at the, at the time, but now, now, I obviously enjoy having a, having a drink with the fellas and that sort of thing. Especially after a win, I, I think you know it's some some of the best times you have in your career is after a win, have a beer with your teammates. I think that's um really cool and you got to celebrate it, I guess. And but you know, it can't be too silly. You got to be ready for the next week. He's the ultimate smoke bomb now, isn't he? That's it. That's yeah, please. Yeah, that's what they tell me. Though. Who? Who's told you that? Yeah, I've, mate. I've I've just heard it. Like I don't I don't reveal my sources. He's but... always back for the six o'clock news. This bloke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's coming to watch me. That's why. Yeah, exactly. got, got to stay up there. No, that's what I heard. I heard you just. You know, he, he's there one moment and he's gone the next. I'd love to know who's telling you this. <laughs> it's just mate, it's just what happened. <laughs> And the, and the uh, and you move quick for a big man. And he's just disappeared. I'm getting sprayed here. I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> Whereas Tom's got some. He's got some. Oh, mate, I've been into the depths. <laughs> mate, no, you no. were with us that time in New Zealand. Yeah, I actually had to go that night. Yeah, it was a, it was the one time I couldn't believe I'd seen you at all. <laughs> oh, I'm not copping this. It's three or four I am. I, I couldn't believe it. Where was that? That was a weird joint down there. <laughs> that, was, that was a strange trip. Uh, Jakey, I-, I wanted to get your thoughts on this, mate, because I I know um, just switching lanes a little bit, but um, the issue of kind of concussion in the game, like it's uh, a big thing, and it's it's been a big thing for a couple of years. But you know, you it's not really his problem because he doesn't put his head into into places to to get knocked out <laughs> well, enough. <laughs> well, and I'm out. So, so, no, so I'm just I've been sledging him a lot, so I've got to sledge you. But um, you know, in terms of you know, with the head knocks, and I know you've had a few and that. How how do you kind of perceive the head knocks in the game at, at this point? Yeah, it's a tough one. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I guess um, it's great what the game's doing, I guess, trying to protect everyone. I guess long long term, it's it's a really good direction the game's taken. And, but it's a hard one, I guess, when you're out there and competing, you you don't think about it too much. You're not thinking about yourself. You just want to be, be out there. So I guess it's, it's good we've got... Uh, health professionals in place to make that decision for you because I think as a player you definitely want to stay out there so it's good that's taken out of your hands I think yeah do you do you think about like I know you've like you've copped a few around the head and the eyes and that do you, is it something players think about during their career like at all or, you know worry about head knocks and uh, no, if, no for you personally no, no, no. no um just yeah just focusing on trying to trying to play play good footy yeah I haven't, haven't really thought about head knocks too much or thought about effects it's just because you have such an interesting tackling style. Like, I, I wonder, do, have, have people ever tried to change your tackling style because of the way you, you go low and in the modern game, it's kind of, you go low at the hips and in the knees and, and, and it's, you know, probably increases the risk that you're going to yeah, cop I, one at I the head. It's been good. I've been, um, I guess, it hasn't been coached out of me, but it's been, I guess, trying to be more selective. You can't go low all the time. Like, if you do that, it's just not effective in the modern game. Like, you, like you've got to try and slow it down. The legs tackle quite often doesn't slow it down. So... It's about being being effective and being a bit smarter. You can't, like when I remember when I was young, I used to try and do it every time, try and just, just every tackle was trying to put a hit on, you know, around down low sort of thing, and it just wasn't working, you know. So it was just about being smarter and trying to pick your moments, that sort of thing, be more effective. So hopefully it's improved a little bit, and um, I guess that would take away from head knocks too. Yeah, not going too low. My favourite thing watching manly games is off the kickoff to watch you. Try and just missile at some like <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's almost scary to watch, but like you, I, you make a point of doing it, don't you? Surely you just you I've got shoot a great, it. great story. About oh, this. yes, please tell me. Um, you got, you got Cam Cullen, um, I do know Cam Cullen, yep, yep, yeah, back, former uh, manly player, yes. Titan. great, what a man, yeah, Cam Cullo, yeah. Oh, mate, talk You'll about listening, talk about punching above your weight. That oh, tough, what a player, tough little bastard, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, legend of a bloke as we. Just said. Um, so, we're playing South one day, um, and I'm we're probably losing. Who knows? Um, and so they scored a try, and we're kicking off. And um, it was one. Of, it was George or Tom. I don't know which one it was um, that we're kicking it to because we always kick the same way. And Jake's going to Cullo like, "Oh, Cullo, come stand here next to me." And Cullo's like, "Mate, 
I'm not standing there. I'm, let me go over here so he doesn't run at me. <laughs> yeah. And Jake's like, no, no, stand here. You'll be fine. So anyway, we um, kicked off and Cullo, and they're running down there and Cullo's looking up. Well, he, he tells a story, Unreal, but he's looking up going, oh, no, this bloke's running straight at me. And all of a sudden, Jake just absolutely flies in from the side and chopped him. And, um, so it was a it, decoy. It was, a, <laughs> is that- it was human bait, he calls it. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a strategy? Is it put the smallest bloke next year, and they just look and they I go? We, oh, yeah, we, I, I think we had about ten kickoffs already by this stage, <laughs> so there was no we're real strategy that was working. <laughs> we lost by about fifty, I think. I think so. <laughs> oh, but, poor Carlo, but no. Carlo, he's such a oh, he's just one of the great guys. He's I remember great to have around. Yeah, we've the only bloke I've seen. We're watching his Queensland Cup Grand Final 2018. He tapped it off a penalty, so they've kicked out. He tapped it. Threw two dummies and went straight through untouched. I don't know. He's the only bloke who can do it. Best dummy in the game. Best dummy in the game. Best oh, du- mate. I've played against Carlo since I was about 12 years old. We went to high school together. And the dude, every time, someone says, do not fall for the dummy. Every time. Like, you know he's going to throw it. It's on the tip sheet. And he's, he's, he's just he's straight through every time. And you think, oh, I think they think, oh, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's five foot five. already. But he's five foot five. Like, even if he throws a dummy, like, I'm just going to hit him. He's going to fall straight over. And he just just bow, like burrow straight through, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no. So the but the the, the kickoff hit is definitely something yeah, that you think about doing. Then oh, you want to get involved early <laughs> in the game. It's the start of the game. You just want to get involved. You know, do something. I get, I get pretty nervous. I think about the game a lot. That sort of thing. And all day I've been I've been thinking about the game to be honest since I woke up. So I just yeah, just want to get involved. Yes, yeah. And what about playing together? Like in terms of. Just kind of, you seem to, they talk about like twins have this kind of sense and you guys know each other's game really well. And Tom, you seem to have really built on following Jake a lot. Is that, is that do you find it easier? Like if you're behind him, he's, you know, he's got an offload in him or you know, does it work better if you're brothers? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I think like obviously, um, you know, you try and work at everyone's game in, in your team and how, how they like to play. And obviously Jake's, Jake's very good with the footy. Um, so... Yeah, for me, it, look, it just is what it is. You know, you follow up on every on every play that you know, and you get opportunities from that. So um, I wouldn't say it's like, oh, his brothers were telepathic. It's just you know, um, you know, just playing footy, I guess. A fullbacks' role. You look, you look at all the good fullbacks is be pushing up and that sort of thing. Be ready for any opportunity, sort of like. So that, that's what they got to be doing, and then, like you look at the likes of Tedesco. If something's there to be taken, they take it, you know. So that, that's what they're going to be doing. I don't think we know each other's game or anything. I think I don't. Think, I don't think that's the case. It's just about being aware, I guess, taking opportunities. And I guess if you train together and play together for a while, you know, sort of understand it a little bit better. Yeah. yeah like it's interesting because like it just seems like you you do. Like it seems like you kind of play off each other a lot, which is you know obviously you know forwards and fullbacks you know don't have a lot to do with each other in terms of attacking wise on the field, but it seems like you guys do. But I guess. You seem to play a bit of, you know, yeah, I think, almost half I think that I'm time. Half back. You think yeah. you're half back, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I, I think, could put the six on, I would. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, uh, uh, like Jake said, you know, your fullbacks roll. You've got to you follow up on on all plays, and, and especially plays where you know ball players have the ball. And I know we're like, very lucky that you know Jake does play a lot um, with the ball in his hand, and you can can use the footy. So um, that's just it's just part of a fullbacks game these days. You know, you're always trying to get. Involved, get around the footy, and um, you know we're lucky that we've got that kind of extra you know, ball playing middle in our side. Do you ever think, just you know, if Cherry's out, give me the seven, just put it on me back? Well, last year I was there was one game. Um, the I think our centre got injured. I think Brad Parker got injured against the Warriors, right? And um, Walks was playing five eight, and they put Walks uh, to centre, and I had did it two sets. Or like it might have been like three or four minutes in the halves, and I like they told me to move to the halves, and I was like cheering, and um, I was there for three minutes. We didn't have the ball. I don't know what happened. We just didn't get the ball, and then something happened, and I got moved back to lock. I was filthy. So you robbed of your <laughs> one moment. Oh no, well, one chance. Yeah. I thought I was going to put kicks in and everything. I would have been loving it. <laughs> even, even even the last game, um, there was a period there just before we got we kicked the field goal where they came on and said, Jake, you're at hooker because Danny um, hurt himself. Should have seen Jake absolutely shit himself. He goes, I'm not going to hooker now. I've got to throw that pass back to Cherry. I'm yeah, not I doing mean, that. Because oh, well, he's kicking the field goal. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Go on point. They want me to throw a bullet, bullet pass to the half. I'll get sprayed if it's terrible. <laughs> Thank God Croaks ran into the pass. He nailed it too. So it was good. Mate, we're talking about guys that are forwards that rate themselves as. Um, 
as halves, halves, the king's got to be Liam Knight, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wait, who? Uh, yeah, yeah, Liam Knight. He, I haven't yeah, heard of him. Ne- never heard of him? No. Mate, he, South Sydney, yeah, he's just waiting for someone to go down in the halves and he go, coach, put me Wait, in. Are you saying rating, him, rating himself as a half or rating himself as the best person to ever walk this planet? <laughs> yeah, probably. That's what he does. He definitely both. But I reckon he... He'd put. He, I remember. Remember in the Oz tag team, oh. he, the king of the king of the grubber for himself. He would never come off. <laughs> no. Like everyone would sub fairly, but him. Second tackle. He was funny in that team, but wow. <laughs> oh, great value. Oh, mate. What Some about of the sprays he used to get? Like Given to old mate. That he, <laughs> so there was, was a bloke in the other team who who looked like Mark Riddell a little bit. Like he was he was small, low to the ground. And he rated himself as an Oz tag hero, like he. <laughs> <laughs> and and then Liam just would give it to him, eh? Call him piggy. He was calling him piggy the whole day, yeah. and then the old mate was come back with uh, he's praying him for the area guard and that sort of thing, <laughs> mid game. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Does he does, does he talk out in the field, Liam? Is he like does he does he does he chat on the NRL field or? No, nah, he's not too bad. I don't think. I only played one game against him when he was down at Canberra. I missed both games. Or oh, he missed one game against South last year, and I missed the other. But I only played like he was on for like ten minutes, so I didn't really. No, he didn't. Nah, not at all. But he's he's, he's one of the funniest guys of all time. Like just to hang around, you just have some of the best laughs. Like just you just wonder how he gets a, gets around life. He just oh, does he's one of the blokes who just finds a way. He just yeah. finds a way. We're trying. We're gonna. I'm, I'm working on him at the moment to try and get, get him on, on the podcast. But he, <laughs> yeah, he's hard to track down as you imagine. Are there any good sledges in the in the NRL? Anyone that comes to mind that can give it to you? On the field that gets in your ear. I'm at fullback. I'm at full away. I can't. I'm not much of a sledger, so I haven't really been in too many uh, battles. If I'm being honest, so I can't really think of. I can't really think of someone. Eh? Any of your teammates that are just good chat? Uh, Tomo doesn't shut up on the field. It was. Um, we don't know what he's saying after time. Yeah, but. it was very fun. Like it was weird playing with no crowds. Um, the last game it was like you could hear everything. So after the game, you're laughing about everything yeah. they're saying. One time, so the ref called Tomo offside, and for about the next five minutes, he kept asking. Tomo kept going to the ref like, "Why are you calling me offside?" Like he, he kept didn't even sa- penalise him. He just even, said you're offside. Yeah, didn't like get back, get back to ten, and he kept saying it. And it was that funny, like, mate, just move on. Like it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's they should just turn the effects mics up at the moment, like, and just no, it'd be you, a great laugh. Yeah. yeah. You Obviously, just probably can't control what's yeah, there. Be a bit of swearing. That's a bit what of swearing. Think. If everyone, I guess, if you understand that, that's part of it. You'd, you'd hear some. I oh, know you probably couldn't have it on TV thinking about it, but it would be a good laugh. I think if people want, I guess, understood. Like, obviously, ideally, you got the fans there, and we just go on with how it normally goes on. But if we're going to make the best of the situation, like, it definitely adds to it. And they do that in the cricket, eh? They just yeah. stop yeah. commentating and yeah. they throw to the stump mic. Yeah, so they get, you can have people listening who can just yeah. listen, and then you, at half time they could even just go, "Oh, have a listen to this, you know, passage of play, I which is the next twenty minutes, yeah, yeah, five minutes of that's what, guys just talking." That's and, probably the best way to do it because you need you need the commentators there. You need to be talking about the game. So if you get the best moments, I guess of each half, like you said, it'd be be awesome to see. Yeah, I reckon that'd be unreal. But look, let's as you said, let's just hope we get fans back soon. Yeah. That's weird. Anyway, boys, we think we'll finish on. We like to finish on uh, some fun little questions, and just I'll shoot them at you, and you f- give me your first answer that you, comes to mind. Are we answering both? Like you? Yeah, I'll, yeah. Both of you can answer. So right. I'll, I'll um just okay. So the one bloke on your team that you don't want to room with. Um, I'll say only because of uh, Ciro saying it, Tomo. Well, apparently he's messy and I don't, I don't know. Okay. He seems alright. That's just what Ciro says. <laughs> I think Tomo said Ciro <laughs> last week. I say uh, Cherry too serious, too serious. Yeah, way he, too serious. He's just he's on all the time. Yeah, isn't he? can't handle him. That's a captain's job, mate. Yeah. Me and That's Cherry a... would go good. Are eh? just yeah. talking about yeah, footy the whole chat, time? <laughs> chatting footy. Um, I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in that room. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, Jakey? This one's for you, especially your favourite cheap meal because I've been here. You know, and you love a feed, and your mum cooks an amazing feed. And uh, like I've been fed here a couple of times, and it's yeah, it's heaven. But I've what- got uh, so I don't know. I can't nail one meal, but you know what I'm shocking at? I can have great days of eating. You know, where you wake up, you say, "Okay, I'm gonna get fit now. I'll eat good," and then I'll oh, get yeah. to night, and I'll just smash ice cream or something, and just oh, ruin the whole day. Yeah, that's me, mate. I did it last night. It's a did it last night. Oh, Smashed yeah. a half a t- like a whole tub of ice cream almost, and I've been healthy you're looking, all day. You're looking all right, mate. Oh, you'll be mate. Sweet. 
Mate. That's that's why we wear black, eh? Yeah. Slimming. <laughs> Smart. You, you know. You're not it's not your first radio, mate. <laughs> I know too. Um yeah, that oh, just yeah, struggle. As you said, my mum and dad cook pretty good, so it's just tea off. It's just tea off here. What about you, Tom? You're pretty fit, so uh, you be right. I don't mind it. Like favourite favourite meal, but great Lavotti's feed down at DY, great restaurant. Um so good. They've been probably my favourite restaurant going around. Get so plug in, get some free food. Yeah. No, no. They're <laughs> great people, Antoinette. Frank, they're great people down there, so I um, love going down there. What about player you hate versing the most? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think I'll probably go with maybe Cam Smith just because he's so good, just controls the game so well, and um, yeah, just very good at just playing at his speed, and he's obviously a very good player, which makes yeah, he's it harder. He's a genius, eh? He's yeah. so good. Like, this, you just, I remember the first time I played him, um, just. Him and Cooper Cronk and Slater that get day. It was just like oh, I was just not good enough. Like I was just, <laughs> just like, not good enough. Like, that's just, like, I'm just not good enough for this. Eh? Like it was just they're so it's good. A, even even like the fir- first time I was playing fullback and against them, just like I felt like he kicked me out of a game. Like, I was just chasing kicks. I, I remember, kicks I remember off. that game. Like um, Trent Barrett was a coach. He's told us when this forty meter line, he's going to go for a forty twenty. Remember it? Yeah. First set they've done. We actually did it pretty good. They didn't get out there forty. He's gone bang. Left foot in the left corner, forty twenty. It was a mad kick. It was a, one of the best kicks I've ever seen. And then you try and sit over there and he hooks it back. You're just bloody chasing his kicks all day. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, little. He's a genius. Yeah, he, he's tough to watch. Like I watched a decade of him just dominating Origin, and like people always used to say, "Oh, Thurston's killing him and Cronk Slater," but you like you don't realize how much Cameron Smith's just just running the whole show and just yeah. He's a yeah, the worst. So good, so oh, no. good. Just can change momentum. Yeah, change the momentum of, of the game with the stuff he does. It's just yeah, crazy. What about celebrity crush? Uh, I know your missus is in the in the room, Tommy, but no, she's in the house. But uh, um, do you got a celebrity crush? Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer, like friends, Jennifer Aniston, like you know, prime in in the heyday or no, now. Anything, any movie. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, a bloke. Was that weird? <laughs> <laughs> well, who's your bloke? Who's the? Well, I could go for days. Stephen Gerrard, Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy. I'm loving Rory's swing at the moment. On no, fire. Who, who was the first one you said? Ger- Stephen Gerrard. Stephen Gerrard. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You, big Liverpool fan. Yeah, right. you're a big Liverpool fan. That's yeah. it. Are they going to get? Are they going to win the league? Are they going to oh, get I think, it? No, I think it's. I think it's. Done. Oh, it's laughable. <laughs> yeah. I would laugh. Oh, it's 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 hilarious. It's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. Like, what do you do? How long have you been waiting? How long until Liverpool, since Liverpool's oh, won a title? Thirty years or something. But imagine the I'd, diehards oh, in in Liverpool. Mate. Like that. This is their time. Like dead set for the last. I don't know, three months or something. They've been. They're going to win. Like there's so many games clear that yeah. like they can't lose. Can't lose. Like, Virtually can't lose, and then the only possible thing that can stop them is <laughs> stop them. <laughs> the most uh, unlikely thing I know. Can think of. Yeah, like last few months, <laughs> everyone's just like, we need to find a way to stop this league. We need to find because yeah. we can't have Liverpool in the league, and yeah. now this has happened. It's it's yeah. the poor people in Liverpool, <laughs> eh? Like they've just been waiting for this. Oh, and they take be, it, they take it so to heart. Like yeah, they're, 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 they're a different level of fans over there. They they love it. Yeah. So we were talking before. It, like, what about if someone come to you and said? Yeah, I'll give you. You can do it for free, but you um, you can be striker for Liverpool. Would that get you away from the NRL? I don't know. You can just stand I'd, in the box and head him in. You know, it's six still, foot four. Oh, Peter Crouch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Peter Crouch. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I look. I still don't think it's doing it, doing it for me. You know, I, I love I love playing uh, rugby league, and um, you know. It is another, I guess, another team. I love team sports. You know, there's no, like Jake said before, there's no better moments than celebrating, um, you know, a victory after a game with your teammates. Um, so, but yeah, rugby league's my passion. I can't play soccer for shit. So. I, why do you want to like this? Is our local local team, that yeah. thing we live around here. Like, it's be hard, very hard to change. Yeah. Um, so, what about your most? You talk about playing for Manly. Most hated part of training. Most hated part yeah, of training. Of training. Um. Jeez, there's been some tough, tough days the last couple of years. Anything that involves repeatedly hitting the ground, like uh, Malcolm's, <laughs> it's just pure gravity, right? Oh, <laughs> it's that hard. It's just, <laughs> when you're tired, you just can't get off the deck. It's that hard. <laughs> and just, I oh, know there's some days there where you just wake up, you're just like, I don't know how I'm going to go to training. A eh? in the depths of preseason, you know, you've done three or four weeks and you're sort of only halfway through. It's um, it's hard, but. Yeah, there's some been some been some tough days. I don't know. Yeah. What, what's your drill? What's it's not really drill. I find like you, I hate doing cardio in the gym. Like I can do it on the field. Like you do what you want to me. Like I can get I'll get through it. But once I've done field, that's 
I'll do my weights and I'm done. I don't need to be in the cardio room doing 10-minute rows or salt bikes. I just don't need to be doing that. So that's that's mine, but Desi loves them, so. <laughs> You'll do them. <laughs> I guess I'll do them. I'll try, and, try and pull out of them, but. <laughs> it's all right at the moment, I guess, because you, you're just training yourself, so you're not getting, you know, you don't have Des watching you, so that's yeah, but Jake's, right. Jake's so serious. He tries to follow it. Like, he tries to tell him to do it, and Jake wants to do it, like. You're a stickler for the rules. Yeah, it's not making you feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's a I'm for a rules. shocker. If I don't do it, I'll feel. I don't know. I'm start wigging out. You like even oh. even uh, you know doing this podcast. You know we had to. It's got to. Jakey's got to make sure he gets goes to the right channels, gets the approval. Tom's like ah, oh, whatever, bros. Don't care. Whenever. <laughs> it's just he's a teacher's yeah. pet. Yeah. <laughs> teach. Teach. Well, I've got to run everything by Desi, you know, and, and the great uh, Wayne Cousins. What a <laughs> shout out to Wayne! Oh, give Cousin a wrap. Um, are you? Are you? Are you the teachers? pet? do you reckon you're you're up there in terms of favoritism? Does like does does Desi have his favourites? Does he have his teachers? Pet? Definitely doesn't. I, I, he doesn't have his favourites. He's that's what he's very good at. He's very good at um. Everyone's on now. It doesn't matter who you are. If you you know Cherry Evans or you first day at the club, I think you're treated exactly the same, which is it's great. It's um. It's very, it's very good to see. He's obviously been around for a long time, and sort of when he come to the club, now, now, now we know why he's been so successful. Like playing, un, like playing under him, just some, some of the stuff he does and how hard he works. But that, that, that is one thing that he definitely treats everyone very equal. Yeah. What about I've heard just finally um, that you're the king of wrestling, like the, you're, you're tough to beat. Oh, That's that what was, Tomo uh, said. That was, that was back in when I was younger. I was, I don't know, I was just good for some reason, but now. Um, we've got so many like big, big guys that I'm struggling now. Like when you're coming up against the likes of like Adam Fanua, Blake, uh, Toff Sipley, Taniela Paseka, Like these are big men. They're weighing like one around one twenty sort of thing. I just can't beat them. No way. Really? Yeah. Because yeah, people always said you're the king, and I said how? Like there's nothing of him. There's no, like for a, for a big I'm man. Talking about me, mate. Yeah. I'm talking about you, Jake. You just, I told you, mate. You just got to find a way. <laughs> find a way. No, nah, but no, not anymore. I, I, when I was young, for some reason, I was all right, but no, nah, I've lost it a bit. Well, how do you go with the wrestle? Tom? Um, avoid at all costs. <laughs> wrestle? <laughs> wrestle. <laughs> doesn't even do it. Like kick catch? Yeah, I do that. Yeah. Forwards have to do these mad hard wrestle sessions. We go out the back, are legit doing kick catch. Well, do you want us to catch the ball in the corner or not? If you want to defend on the set? He gets all the glory. He gets all the glory, doesn't he? Like it just it's just well all, deserved. It's well all deserved glory. It's it's all the pretty stuff and that, but what are you saying? What's you saying? Won't put won't put his head. Put my head in places where blokes don't put their feet. That's what you gotta do. And they don't do it. Jeez, you taught yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but we do these sometimes these forwards, so like it'll be split, like specialist skills, right? Um, and the forwards is fitness. And the back is like legit catch pass and that like it's a G up. <laughs> right. It happens, at and then they get then they get the big contracts. Yeah. You need they, it. They get all the they get all the the sponsorship deals, and it's yeah. just it's a G up. <laughs> yeah, we know who wins. Yeah, you know, we know who wins. We know who wins games. It's the, it's the Fords. <laughs> anyway, boys, uh, a, a very enjoyable chat. Thanks for coming on the Refuse to Lose podcast. Thanks for having me uh, at your house and. Uh, Hopefully, we're back playing footy very soon. Sounds good, mate. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks for listening, guys. We've got plenty more episodes coming your way very soon. Don't forget to follow the Refuse to Lose podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We look forward to talking to you again soon.